Today on Burke Make Stuff, I'm gonna show you how to take one of these fire bulbs, which looks just like this, which is wonderfully realistic and surprisingly bright and runs on 120 volts, just like every other light bulb in your house. And instead of using that, we're gonna run it using only two AA batteries. That's three volts instead of 120. It also lets you then take it wherever you wanna use it, put it wherever you wanna use it, put it in whatever application you want from your backyard to cosplay. And I'll show you how to do it right now. A couple of years ago, I bought a bunch of these fire light bulbs and I brought them home, tried to use them and hated them because of this. This is the Edison socket. This is just like any other regular light bulb. You need to be near an electrical outlet and you need to have the other end of the Edison socket in order to use it and make it work, which limits the hell out of these. Now, what if I wanted to do something different? What if I wanted to take it out and put it in the garden or in a lantern or take it somewhere for a cosplay? Fire. You can't with this because you need to have it plugged in. It took someone who knows way more about electronics than I do to figure that out. And that's Adam Savage. Remember kids, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. Adam Savage has a wonderful, probably my favorite, YouTube channel of all times. It's called Tested. He does these one-day builds. You should definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description, and I'll remind you at the end of the video about it so you check it out. But what he figured out was that you don't have to plug these in. You can actually run them on two AA batteries. So I'm going to show you in the most beginner electronic way I can because I am a beginner with electronics. This is my first electronics project. Now I've already done it, I figured it out, and I can show you exactly what I'm going to do, but there's no soldering involved, there's no craziness, there's nothing difficult. Thank you so much. I'll have affiliate links in this description below. If there's any of this stuff you want to get to try this yourself, it'll be there. Let's get to it. Materials. What do I need? I'll be explaining how to use all of these materials throughout the video, but for now, you need the guts of a fire bulb, which I'll show you how to get to in just a second, a wired holder for your AA batteries, a wire stripper to remove the insulation from your wires, some wire of course, this is bell wire, but I'll show you a, a whole trick about that later, some heat shrink, and a heat source. In this case, I'll be using a lighter, uh, and I'll explain that again, how to use that later. And uh, while you don't need it, I'll be using a toggle switch on mine so that I can control the fire bulb from outside of the lantern that I'm going to put it in in the video. Okay, let's talk about getting the guts out of this thing that we need for the project. When you first crack open the bulb, which comes off really easy, well of course those wires won't be cut, but what you're going to see is this little piece in here. And this is kind of the crux of where a lot of all this happens. Now we're not going to use this in the project, but it's kind of important to understand. While this whole thing is set up for 120 volts from your wall to go in here, this thing reduces that voltage and transmits it from being AC to DC and breaks it down to three volts. You don't need the 120 volts, you just need 3 volts, which is why we can just use the two AA batteries to power this whole thing. So this piece you don't need at all. Literally, when you open it, you're going to cut those two wires right where they are and get rid of it. And then we look at this. This top piece also comes off, and this is the guts of the piece. You're going to pull these wires out, it'll make it much more easy to use. Don't detach them, just pull them out, make them accessible, and that is the guts of the fire bulb. Now as we go through this project, I'm gonna show you simply how to use all of these tools and explain exactly what they do. The first thing you wanna grab are your wire strippers and then take each of the pieces that has a wire, go to the end and strip it. To do that, take a look at your wire strippers. Just above where the handles are, where the two pieces of metal meet, there are small holes of different sizes, and if you look closely, they've been sharpened. So all you're going to do is line that wire up with the right size hole, squeeze it nice and tight, and pull. And what that's going to do is expose the copper wire underneath the insulator. Now that we have the wire stripped, let's see how this is going to fit into the project. We have a flame bulb, which will be represented by these circles, and that flame bulb has a red wire and a black wire coming out of it. We also know we have two AA batteries in play and they're in a holder that allows us to use them easily. That casing also has a black and a red wire coming out of it. Because the wires on each of these components really aren't long enough to do what we need, we're gonna be using other pieces of wire to connect them. 
For this project, I'm going to be using bell wire, a low voltage wire usually used for installation of doorbells in your home. These little hash marks on the schematic designate points where connections are going to need to be made. We'll do that in just a second. But in terms of building the circuit itself, that will be all that you need. Uh, if you want to use it just like this, that's totally fine. You'll just remove the batteries in and out to turn on and off the fire bulb. But in my case, I'm going to be a little bit more fancy and add a switch into our equation, which will slightly change the schematic to look like this and allow me to be able to turn on and off the lantern from outside of the lantern itself. I also found that laying out the real pieces exactly how I have my schematic planned out makes it visually much clearer what has to actually be done here in terms of connections and attachments. Let's take a look at how I made some of those connections. What I did first was take the two exposed wires that I wanted to attach and then twist the exposed parts around each other multiple times, grabbed the set of pliers and then folded the wire again over itself, just like you see here. Then I took some of that heat shrink we talked about, which is awesome. I'm using clear here so you can see exactly what happens and you slide that well over the twisted wires. Then you just grab your lighter and keeping it a good distance away, you let some of the heat from your lighter hit that plastic and it shrinks it around those wires that you want to seal in. After a couple of seconds, that heat shrink cools and becomes hardened and that works to hold everything in place. All the connections to the wires are made the same way except those that are attached to the switch. For those, you make a little J with your wire put it behind the Phillips head screwdriver and tighten that down. You wanna make sure that you're using the red wires on this because that's the positive side and that's what you need to use for the switch. This is the part where my microphone didn't work because the batteries were dead. So I'm telling you something about, uh, oh, about this lantern and about how awesome it is and how we're gonna put the wired up fire bulb inside of it and it, um, I don't know, that it, it's pretty and, and nice and how great it is because uh, I don't have to put it directly in that because inside of that lantern, fits this little metal piece that I can attach everything to nice and simply and stuff. In order to attach the fire bulb to the metal base, we're just going to use a little bit of household hot glue, give it a chance to cure and get solidly in place, and then we're actually going to flood that whole area around the bulb with the same hot glue to make sure it has a solid footing in there. And once we know that that's good to go, we're going to test the bulb out to make sure it looks awesome, which it does even before the diffuser top is put back on. And then we're going to take a piece of double-sided tape and put it on the bottom of the battery pack. We'll then put the battery pack on the bottom of the metal piece, which will keep everything nice and consolidated and in the same area. So if we need to make any fixes, that'll be nice and easy as well. I'll then load it into the lantern and see specifically where the switch hits the wall. That way I know exactly where I need to drill out to make the opening for the switch. Once that's in place, I'm going to make sure to use a rasp, or in this case, a file to make sure that's all nice and smooth. Then we'll attach the switch in the hole we just made, add a black cover to the switch so that it's not as visible, and then replace the diffuser on top of the guts of the fire bulb, which adds an awesome, mm, I wanna call it an ambient light feel to this that really makes it realistic. Then we'll just take a step back and look at our final project. Thanks to Adam Savage's video, in under an hour I had this whole thing figured out and put together, and in the next hour I put three more of them together, using the four original bulbs that I got, which makes me super happy because now they're not just living on my shelf collecting dust. One of them is above my dining room table and another awesome lantern, we, we like lanterns if you didn't notice, and the other two I'm messing with right now because I'm trying to figure out how to put them in my fireplace and have it look amazing, but that is still definitely a work in progress. Bonus tip. I just remembered that when we were talking about the materials for this, I promised you guys a hack that deals with wire. So let's go with this. When you're using low voltage like we are for this project, you can go and grab one of the old ethernet cables you have guaranteed almost in your home. Definitely probably gonna find it in that drawer that you throw all the wires in and you don't know what they're there for. Ethernet wires were used back in the day when computers were still hooked up directly to modems instead of being wireless like the whole world is now. All you need to do is cut the ends off of the ethernet cable and then take the casing off of the cable as well. Inside you're going to find a whole bunch of different white and colored wrapped wires. When you take those apart, those are perfect for this project because they deal with low voltage and you got yourself free wire for little projects like this for a long time. 
Good one. If you're interested in doing this project yourself, because yes, it is that awesome, don't forget that the affiliate links are down below in the description so that you can find anything and everything you need for this project. If you loved it, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell as well. Your support, your appreciation, your being part of this community makes this worthwhile, and it means the world to me. There's lots of other videos on Burke Makes Stuff with projects that you can do yourself, and I will see you there.